today's video, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be answering a question from somebody who's written me a comment recently. So this comment is from a guy named Daniel and he asks me about the Dali Rubicon 2s versus the Opticon 6. So two speakers from the Dali range there. He says that he has a small room about three meters by four meters. He's going to be listening 2.5 meters from the speakers and he listens to all kinds of music. So first things first, there are two different types of speaker, completely different types of speaker. One is a floor stander, the other is a stand mounter for those of you who don't know what these two speakers are. You've got the Opticon 6, which retails at about 1,000 to 1,200 pounds, and it's a floor stander. You've got the Rubicon 2, which retails at about 16, 1,700 pounds, and it's a stand mounter or bookshelf speaker. So first of all, that's a 700 pound-ish price differential right there. Now, your requirements, Daniel, you say that your listening room is three by four meters, so that's 12 meters squared. But what also really matters in the hi-fi world is the volume of your room as well. So we, so we also ideally need the height measurement so we understand the volume. So I'm gonna assume that your room is 2.5 meters in height, it's pretty standard. Your room's volume is gonna be 30 cubic meters or about 1060 cubic feet. And in speaker world, that's regarded as a small room. Positives of floor standards in general, you've got bigger, more convincing sound and it fills up the room with more ease and you get higher sound pressure levels. You also have a more full range sound. So the frequency spectrum, the audio spectrum goes from 20 Hertz all the way up to 20,000 Hertz. A floor standard typically starts to roll off at around the 40 Hertz, 50 Hertz sort of range. That tells me that you could use it for more types of music and you're gonna have a better time playing it with movies as well. And it's important because movies have a lot of sub bass effects. You will have less need for a very high powered amplifier because floor standards basically being very large, they're very efficient with the wattage that they're given. So the electrical wattage that goes in, more sound pressure comes out the other end. Negatives room gain is going to be more of a problem so that's basically interference from your room that colors the sound and especially this is going to be a problem in smaller rooms the other thing is that typically floor standards when you're com when you're comparing let's say a thousand pound floor standard to a thousand pound bookshelf or stand mounter the audio fidelity is going to be in favor of the stand mounter third negative Typically, a floor standing speaker is going to be a little bit less rhythmic and less agile as good uh, stand mounter speakers. And you have more drivers that have to integrate very well with each other. Stand mounters, on the other hand, you have higher fidelity sound at a lower price. You have better integration into small and medium sized rooms, better rhythm and timing, so it suits like a lot of music, but especially very fast paced music or movies with lots of effects. Sometimes actually you have a wider sound stage uh, with stand mounters and better imaging. And because there's less drivers in a stand mounter, there's less drivers to integrate as well. First negative, you're gonna need a higher wattage amplifier because bookshelf speakers tend to be less efficient than floor standards. Secondly, Bookshelf speakers roll off at around 50, 60 hertz, typically. So they're not usually very good for sub bass. And some music genres are really gonna suffer from that sort of thing, especially like hip hop music, for example. And movies too. Movies, as said before, you get a lot of bass effects from movies, so they're probably gonna sound better on floor standards for movies. The other negative that people don't always take into account is that they're called bookshelves, but really they should be called stand mounters because they sound the best on stands. Now you're gonna to have to factor in the cost of buying stands. If I were to spend 1700 pound on a pair of stand mounters, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that the stands I buy 
with those stand mounters are at least three, four hundred pounds for it to sound the best. You could always go for a DIY option, for example, make a, a custom stand out of wood or some MDF and sand fillet or something like that. But if you can trust your skills at making that sort of thing and you think it's gonna look good and all that sort of stuff, then uh, probably, I would say probably best to go with the, the professional option. Okay, right off the bat, I would say your room seems a little bit more suitable for bookshelf speakers, but it is a personal preference as I can understand that the highest fidelity sound isn't always the ultimate goal for a lot of people. Like you get a decent quality sound and after that it's kind of diminishing returns and you kind of, you're happy with it. So I can understand that. So I've put together a diagram of your room based on what you've told me about it and basically I see a couple of options. With the floor standers, you say that you're going to sit two and a half meters away from these speakers, so two options for optimal sound. As mentioned earlier, with floor standers, you need to really keep them away from the walls, especially in small rooms, and I'd say at least 50 centimeters, ideally about a meter with the Opticon 6s. And I've had these speakers, I've got these speakers actually, and uh, I can tell you that they're not they're not anemic in any way, you know. If they if the room isn't right, they will sound very over bass if if you if you give it the chance. So you've got two options: option A, which is on the left, and option B, which is on the right. So with option A, you have good distance from the speaker; you're far enough away from the speakers. But as you can see from the diagram, you might have a limited width in the sound stage. You could put them closer to the side walls, but you're probably going to have a little bit more interference. Option B, you have a decent amount of width, so you're gonna have enough width and sound stage going in this plane. However, the distance between you and the speaker isn't really enough, so the angle between you and the speakers is too high. And what that means is that you're probably gonna lack a very uh, consistent and believable center stage. So for example, if you have a vocalist who lies right in the middle of the, of the performance, it might sound a little bit hollow and unconvincing and you could kind of get annoyed with that. The other thing that some people do is they experiment a little bit with towing in the speakers. So basically pointing the speakers uh, more towards your listening uh, position. However, in this case, Dali have told you directly not to do that. It's actually part of their wide dispersion principle and uh, I mean, it's in the instructions, in the manual, it's on their website. They are very clear and say that you should put these speakers perpendicular to the walls. You shouldn't be towing them in. Now, your room with bookshelves, I think that you have more options for a good sound with the bookshelves. They can sit a little bit closer to the wall because they're generally a little bit less, a um, bit more forgiving, sorry. But the other amazing benefit, I think, is that you could add some subwoofers into the mix at some point and you could cross them over at a point let's say 50 hertz or 60 hertz as low as possible and you're going to benefit there on top of that with the subwoofers if you get some decent subwoofers or a mini dsp unit or something like that you could throw in some parametric equalization what that means is you can kind of tune out the dips and the and the peaks of the bass for each individual subwoofer so what you can get is a bass response that's close to perfect as possible bearing in mind your room. I think that this is a, a good option for you because you know, you've got a more versatile speaker system, don't you? You're gonna have a good speaker system for a wider genre of mu uh, genres of music. You also have a speaker system with dedicated LFE channels. What that means is for movies, you're gonna have a dedicated subwoofer channel and that's gonna be excellent for movies. It's gonna sound like something totally different to floor standards in stereo. Now, my personal opinion, weighing up all of this, the Opticon 6s and the Rubicon 2s, they're a great choice. They are generally a very good choice with a lot of music. Personally, I can attest to that. I found that they're a little bit more forgiving with different genres and bad recordings as well. I'd be considering myself, I'd be considering the Opticon 2s, right? So the stand mounter version of the Opticons or the Rubicon 2s and I would only consider these if I had scope for a subwoofer or two subwoofers in the future in that room. 
Now, if you are 100% sure that you don't want subwoofers in that room, or at least high quality subwoofers in that room, I would probably opt for the Opticon 6s and just accept the downsides of the speaker in your room. And the reason I would do that is because I care about audio fidelity, but most important to me is the actual range of sound that you get, because if you haven't got enough bass extension, it can make the whole music, the music sound totally different. And I found that if you have a decent bass extension, the treble and the mid range, they kind of, they kind of gel together a lot better. You've got to remember the bass is the underpinnings of the sound and your ears can understand that. I would also say that a floor stander, you know, it might not seem like a lot, like 10, 20 Hertz more extension, but in music world, that's a lot. That's about half an octave, give or take. Um, in the case of the Opticon 6 and the Rubicon 2s, it's about half an octave. So to me, I would say that's important. So I hope you had some benefit from this video. And yeah, if you liked it, like, please like, subscribe, support my channel. And I'll see you next time.